corporation would buy treasury stock is because they think their stock is undervalued. Well, this is exact. Uh, this is an example of that. They went out, bought it for fifteen dollars, subsequently sold it for twenty six. They thought it was undervalued, fifteen dollars. Turn around and sell it for twenty six. They made money off buying their own stock because they thought it was undervalued. Now let's get to the journal entry. What happens? Well, we sell something, we get cash. How do you increase cash? Debit cash. Debit cash. Now, the the treasury stock has. It, the treasury stock was only, when we bought it, it was only worth $15. So when we turn around and sell it, we don't own that $15, well, the 10,000 shares at $15. So we have to decrease our owning the ownership of treasury stock, but at the $15. We can't do it at the 26 because we didn't buy for 26 we bought for 15 So we decrease 15 times the 10,000 shares, that's 100,000. Credit 100,000. Remember, we debited the treasury stock at the beginning to increase it. We'll need to credit it now to decrease it. Now, there's this difference. Remember back in A, the difference between the cash we received and the common stock par value was additional paid in capital? Same thing now. We, we uh, credit additional paid in capital here uh, for the difference between the cash and the treasury stock we issue. Conceptually, it may not make sense. Mechanically, you've got to know that when you sell treasury stock, if you sell it above cost or above what you pay for it, the credit goes to additional paid in capital. Just remember that. All right, moving on to D. On December 1st, Round Valley declared a cash dividend of 15000 Remember, lesson four, uh, closing entries, when we were going through uh, Round Belly's uh, period end, and we declared a dividend. Well, you need to, you need to record the liability on the, in the period where you declare the dividend, right? We've already seen this before. We're going to go through it again. But all you do is dividends declared, debit, right? Because you're decreasing your retained earnings. You're decreasing retained earnings. How do you decrease stock in... Retained, retained earnings is in stockholders' equity. How do you decrease stockholders' equity? With a debit. So we're decreasing that, right? Because we're taking money that we had, uh, you know, from our retained earnings, that, that's the accumulated profit. We're taking money out of there and giving it to, back to our shareholders. So we're decreasing that. So we decrease stockholders' equity with a debit. Debit, de dividends declared. Now we have a payable. Now we have to owe, we, we, we owe this to the shareholders now. We owe that money. Credit the liability. Credit dividends payable, 15000 All right. Subsequently, Round Belly turns uh, Round Belly pays the declared dividend of fifteen thousand. The general entry for the cash payment is this is easy. Cash goes out the door. Cash goes out the door. Decrease cash. Credit cash. Credit cash. Now we're, we no longer own that owe, owe that dividend payable. How do we decrease the liability? Debit the, div, uh, the, the dividend payable. Debit the liability. That's how you decrease it. All right. Moving on to E. On December first, Round Belly issued a five percent stock dividend of its on its hundred thousand shares outstanding. Uh, 100,000 outstanding shares of one cent par value common stock. Market value of the stock on December 1st was 25 per share. The journal entry to uh, the journal entry for December 1st is. All right, remember down below uh, uh, the concepts and definitions. I said I'd get back to that small large stock dividend. All right, here we go. This uh, stock dividend we're de we've declared a five percent stock dividend. Okay, now. Down below, I said stock dividend, if it's less than 25%, you record it at the current market value. If it's a large stock dividend, greater than 25%, record it at par value of stock. Okay, this is 5%, it's less, it's less than the 25%, so this is a small stock dividend, record it at the current market value of the stock. All right, so how do we do this? Well, just like a, a dividend where we give them cash, this is a dividend where we're giving them stock, same thing. We're taking earnings out of the company. How do we decrease stockholders' equity? We're through a debit, right? Debit stockholders' equity. So we debit retained earnings here. Now, we said we, we do it at market value, at current market value. Well, so the current market value is $25, but the par value is only... Uh, one. Okay, the common stock we issue, we issue it at market value. All right, so there's a little math here. 5% of the 100,000 shares is our stock dividend. So 5% of 100,000, that's 5,000, all right? 5,000 times the market value. Remember, if it's a small stock dividend, you do it at market value. 5,000 times $25 per share, that's the market value. It's 125,000. That's why we debit retained earnings for 125,000. The common stock, remember, par value. Par value is only one cent. 5,000 times 1 cent is $50. Credit that $50. Remember the difference? The, obviously the difference is this additional paid in capital. Anytime we issue stock, we do it above our par value, it, it's going to go to additional paid in capital. Just remember that. Mechanically, it needs to. It, this equation needs to balance. You know, debits need to equal credits. If we're only issuing common stock, our par value is $50. 
We need to balance. The balance goes to additional paid and capital. Just remember that. All right, down below that, I, I show an example of a large stock dividend. But as, when we get into the stockholders' equity statement, I'm not including that in there. I'm only including the large, uh, the small stock dividend. You'll see that in a second. All right, moving on. On December 1st, Roundbelly issued a 100% stock dividend on, a, on its 100,000 outstanding shares of a one cent par value common stock. All right, 100% stock dividend. That's greater than 25%, right? This is a large stock dividend. Treat it as a large stock dividend. 100% is greater than 25%. Hun, uh, so we got 100% of 100,000. So we're issuing another 100,000. What's 100,000 times one cent? Well, it's 1,000. So we just... Uh, all we need to do is debit retained earnings and credit the common stock at the par value. Remember, we don't treat it as market value, we record it at the par value. That's a thousand. Uh, debit retained earnings, similar to above where we're debit retained earnings, but we did the debit to retained earnings at market value. Now we're only doing it at par value. Uh, debit retained earnings, 1,000. Credit uh, common stock, 1,000. All right. In the middle of your cheat sheet, you'll see this uh, a box titled Stock Splits. Stock Split. I'm going to go through this really quick. There's no journal entries to make with a stock split because it's only reducing our par value. Uh, if you go through the equation, I said, assume that a corporation had 5,000 shares of $1 par value common stock at standing before a 2 for 1 stock split. 2 for 1, so we're doubling. It's kind of like a 100% stock split. We're issuing, for every one share that's out there, we're going to issue two, all right? or another share. So the common stock shares uh, before the split were 5,000. 2 for 1, we're doubling our outstanding shares. After the split, it's 10,000. Par value per share before the split, $1. Par value after share, uh, after split, 50 cents, right? Total par value is still the same, right? We don't change the par value. We're only changing the number of shares, or we do change the par value because we're decreasing it because there's more shares outstanding, but we only got the, the, the we're decreasing the par value because we only got that amount of cash upon our initial um, issuance of stock. All we're doing is we're sending more shares out there, decreasing the par value. And, and so that's the illustration of that. All right. Quickly, I'm going to go through this cumul well, no, let's go to the statement of stockholders' equity. I'm going to show you how all these uh, transactions that we went through, A through E, how they flow to the, com to the statement of stockholders' equity. Now, you're saying the four basic financial statements, balance sheet, income statement, statement, statement of uh, retained earnings, and statement of cash flows, where does the statement of stockholders' equity come in? Well, the statement of stockholders' equity, is, it, it adds on to the statement of retained earnings. You probably won't see this, well, you may or may not see this in your financial accounting class. I'm covering it just in case. You know, I want to make sure you have all the material, all the, all the information you need. So I'm going through this really quickly. It includes our one column called retained earnings. It includes the information you need to include on the statement of retained earnings, but it also includes additional information. All right, so we got five columns. Common stock, additional paid capital, retained earnings, treasury stock, total. Now, those are the columns. These are our transactions down the left-hand side, A, B, C, D, E. Common, stocks, common stock is issued. All right, remember, uh, our... The uh, A, our journal entry to common stock was 1,000, so we increased common stock 1,000. Additional paid in capital, we, we got additional amount over the par value, so additional paid in capital, 2.499 million. We put that in that column. Next, we, uh, we went out and bought treasury stock. Uh, so we took, we took stock back, right? We, we're decreasing the outstanding stock, so we decrease, you know, that, you see that's a, a parenthesis, that's a negative. We're decreasing the, treasure, uh, the outstanding value of uh, the, the common stock there, so we need to put parentheses and subtract that from the equation. Uh, C, treasury stock's issued. It's going back out there, so we need to increase it under that column, treasury stock, 150000 increase. Cash dividends are declared. Okay, well, that's going to come out of retained earnings, right? We're, we're declaring that, um, oh, sorry. Yeah, cash, uh, cash dividends declared. That money is coming out of cash, so we need to decrease retained earnings. Decrease retained earnings by the uh, fifteen thousand. Now, stock dividend declared. Remember when it did the stock dividend? I'm only showing the top part of E, uh, where it was a small stock dividend where we recorded a uh, market value and we had additional paid in capital. So fifty thousand, and then the additional paid in capital of one twenty four nine five zero. All right, that is the stockholders equity account. I've included net income. Net income, that wasn't, I just added that. It's nowhere in, 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 the, in the chart. I just did that so that the whole thing would balance. And this is what a typical stockholders equity statement will look like. So that net income I added. Don't worry about where that came from. Now, moving on. Cumulative preferred stock down in the left-hand corner. I'm going to go through this. Okay, so preferred stock, by definition, it sounds better than common stock, right? It has preference over common stock. What does it have preference over? It's got preference over dividends. So preferred stock has preference over common stock. The, uh, 
right? Because the main the main thing about owning stock is getting earnings out of the company, right? So common shareholders get earnings out too, but preferred shareholders get it before. They have preference. Now, so in addition to common stock, assume that Round Valley has issued 100,000 shares of $1 par cumulative preferred stock. Cumulative, the key word, cumulative preferred stock outstanding with a 10% dividend rate. All right, cumulative means every year the preferred shareholders get 10% of their uh, the par value outstanding back as a dividend. Now, it may not be paid every year, and in this case, it's not paid every year, but before they can issue any uh, dividend to the common shareholders, they have to get that uh, cumulative uh, dividend before the common shareholders. That's They have preference. They're, 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 they're up here, the common shareholders down here. Any dividend that needs to go through them first. Now, let's walk through the equation. So, Round Belly declares a $100,000 stock dividend. All right, well, we need to pay our preferred shareholders per first, right? So this is uh, in year one, we, we didn't pay any dividend, but we owe it, right? $1 part value times 10% times 100,000 shares, that's $10,000. That's what we owe, cumulative. We owe it back for last year. We didn't pay it last year, but we owe it. Before we can give any dividend to our uh, common shareholders, we need to pay the arrearage to our preferred shareholders. Now, in the current year, we also owe them $1 par value times 10% times 100,000 shares, 10,000. So, we owe our, our preferred shareholders 20,000 in a cumulative dividend before we can pay any of our common shareholders. So, the uh, remainder, the, the dividend available for common stockholders is the 100 less the 20, 80. So that's, and if, and if you may see these problems in your homework, you may see them in your exam. Cumulative preferred, just know, if it's in year one, they don't get anything paid, but they're owed it, before the, you can issue any dividends to the common shareholders, you need to pay all those years that weren't paid at the rate that is stated. In this case, it was 10%. Basically, that's uh, equity. Concepts may be a little bit difficult. You can rewatch these lessons. Make sure you know how these uh, journal entries work mechanically because you're going to see them over and over. These are going to be on your tests. They're going to be in your exams. That's uh, equity. Thank you.